Well, I grew up in Plainfield, New Jersey. Very poor, very depressed. Barely any food in the cupboards. Um, I could remember my sister and I breaking into neighbors' houses just to get food to eat. My mother was a drug addict, then I didn't have a father. Back in 2001, I was selling drugs out of a bar. I wound up getting a fight inside the bar that spilled to outside of the bar, and they charged me with first degree armed robbery. When you go in, they give you a blanket with a bunch of holes in it. You have no socks, no undergarments, just your tan suit. Then you hear the gate closed, and it's like a metal clinking sound, clink, 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 and that last one just happens like a crash. Reality sticks in, you recognize you're stuck in this box. You're not going anywhere. The first time that I got to sit down one-on-one -on -one with a student, I had a really tough time. We were doing a lesson on simplifying fractions, and all it really took was showing that person that you believe in them and that they can get better with some practice. That's all it took. And he was able to say, like, you know what, you're right. This isn't actually that bad. It was the most rewarding experience for me that I've ever had up until that point, seeing that light go off in that student's brain. And it really just reinforces the common capabilities and humanity that we all really have. P.D. Green allowed me to see that there was more to life than what there was. And they had some crazy idea to bring volunteer college kids in. And um, that's when I met Julia. And I was working on a, a lot of Greek homework. I asked her, you know, because I was curious, why are you here? Like, how much do they pay you? Because that's what you think, you know, not, nothing's free in jail. And she's like, well, I don't get paid, I volunteer. So I said, okay, you know what? If people are coming in volunteering, I'll give them 100% of what I got. I remember her talking about how it also opened her eyes that not everybody has opportunities like she did. Through that tutorship, I wound up getting a uh, GED at Albert C. Wagner. When I got my GED, they continued to work with me and taught me how to write college essays. And I'm, I'm gonna be graduating in a year with my master's in divinity. Who am I, right? a scrappy kid that grew up in Plainfield, to be able to grace the steps of Princeton Theological Seminary. People from all over the world come here, and here I come. Because it was people that believed in me that allowed me to be here. All that people know is the box that they're stuck in. Education helps people see that there's life outside of the box. There's something more. If people truly cared about making sure the prisons aren't clogged and overpopulated, they'd allow people to be educated because they see there's more to life than what they've been shown. What helped me beat recidivism was the opportunity to go to college because I was able to focus on something that was positive and give it my all. And also, you know, I was able to make an impression on a lot of people who didn't know me as uh, inmate 810161D. They knew me as Walter Fortson. And they knew me as the kid who was probably the largest kid in the class, but sat in the front row and was always the first one there. It brings a tear to my eye when I see people continually being involved in the PD Green program, coming out of prison, going to college. They're not what people said they are. They're not what they tell themselves. You know, it shows you that roses still can grow from the concrete.